Evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be here. Give me a cheer if you're drinking tonight. Good stuff. I do like a drinking crowd. I had a gig last Wednesday where no one was drinking equals no one was laughing. <laughs> to say I didn't do very well is an understatement. If I'm being honest, I died like a poor helpless baby squirrel who's mistakenly gone looking for shelter from the cold inside Gary Gatona's fanny. <laughs> I say no one was drinking. There was a group of young guys in the corner, pushed up in fancy dress. I said to them, how come you're in fancy dress? One of them said, it's my stag do. I said, it's a bit unusual having a stag do on a Wednesday. He says, oh no, we've been out since Friday. <laughs> I said, all right, nice one. When's the wedding? He says, oh no, we missed that. <laughs> So the press have often labelled me as Scotland's best kept secret, if it wasn't for the register. <laughs> Still live in Scotland, but I spend quite a lot of time in London. And whenever I'm in London, there's a few things I miss that you just don't get there. You know, like square sausage, and iron brew, and conversation. <laughs> I'll always remember the first time I went down there. Because for a shy wee boy from Aberdeen, a weekend in London was a bit like being on holiday. Well, it was 28 degrees and no cunt could understand a word I was saying. <laughs> so give me a cheer if you've seen me before. Yeah. Oh, I'm not very good at stalking folk. <laughs> My mum's from Aberdeen, but my dad's Turkish. That means I can shag a sheep and then turn it into a fucking mean kebab. <laughs> <laughs> I always try and look smart when I'm performing. I went through a period of wearing the kilt, but I'd find there'd always be some arsehole would come up at the end of the night and say, I see you're wearing the kilt. Does that mean you're a true Scotsman? I'd say, well, I'm an alcoholic and I beat up women, so... <laughs> I've been wearing black a lot lately. I heard that black has the effect of making you look thinner than you are. Which begs the question, how fat could Oprah Winfrey look if she was white? <laughs> No, except that joke's not very politically correct. To be honest, I'm fed up with political correctness. It's, uh, it's everywhere nowadays. There's a lot of things you used to be able to say that you just can't say anymore. Innocent little things, like if you're watching football, you can't call them linesmen anymore. They've got to be referees assistants. The same way you can't call them firemen nowadays. They've got to be firefighters. You're not allowed to say black coffee anymore. It's got to be coffee without milk. <laughs> you can't call it giving your neighbour's daughter a lift to the brownies. It's got to be grooming. <laughs> no, I didn't have an easy childhood. One of my earliest memories was my dad saying, Now, son, if you eat up all of those, you'll get some ice cream. I said, but dad, it says on the box you're only meant to take two every four hours. <laughs> Remember when I was 12, my dad caught me smoking, so as a punishment he made me smoke every cigarette in the packet, one after the other. Twenty years later I got my revenge. He was at my house on Christmas Day and I caught him smoking one of my cigars. So what did I do? I stabbed him. <laughs> ah, speaking of smoking, I'm trying to give up just now. No worry, that means I'm going to put on weight. I'm always worried about my weight. And I got excited recently when I heard that McDonald's had started an initiative to encourage people to take more exercise. But it turns out they just moved the straws and napkins further from the counter. <laughs> I stopped at McDonald's on the way to a gig recently. And there was a poster on the wall. I don't know if it's exclusive to that branch or if they've got it in every McDonald's. But the poster said, 
At McDonald's, we are extremely proud of our excellent customer service record. If during your visit there's any aspect of the service you've received which you're not entirely satisfied with, don't hesitate to contact our customer service manager, Gary Turnbull, and it gave you his email address. Fair enough. But it also gave you his mobile phone number. <laughs> now, I would imagine this wasn't Gary Turnbull's idea. <laughs> And I bet by now he's getting a bit pissed off at late night phone calls that are along the lines of Oh Mr Turnbull, the woman behind the counter is not opening the toilet. You've got to tell her to open the toilet. Quick, she's got to open it. Oh, it doesn't matter, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> oh Mr Turnbull, I've just gone up to the guy behind the counter with one star and I've gone pa -da -pa -pa -pa, and he's no saying, I'm loving it. <laughs>